Hello, welcome. I'm Pauline from PQW and I'm delighted you can join me. I want to explain to you how I join my blocks together with my Between the Block Technique Quilt As You Go. So I developed this some years ago and it's possibly been around for a long time but I've taken it a lot further than the basic way we put our quilts together, quilt as you go. I can't quilt a big quilt on a um, little domestic machine anymore so I wanted to make it easy for myself and hopefully make it easier for you. We're going to make each block, then we're going to quilt each block and then we join it together. We'll quilt the borders last and then join them to the quilt. Now in the development of um, all of my quilt as you go techniques I wanted to be able to do lots of different sashings to make the quilt really jump and pop. I just wanted it to look really nice no matter what quilt I did. So I developed my sasha tools. Now these are the tools that I designed quite some years ago. I am the original designer of these tools. I own all rights to this. Nobody else does. We do have copycats out there but let me tell you I've trialled theirs and theirs melt. I can guarantee ours won't melt when we put the iron against them. So we do 18 different sizes but this is the most popular 10 out of the 18. This set here ranges from two and a half inches in width. We have a two inch, a one and a half, a one and a quarter, a one and one eighth, a one inch, three quarters of an inch, half an inch, one quarter of an inch and one eighth of an inch. So these are designed for you to put your fabric through and press with the iron. Whether your fabric's on the straight grain or on the bias, whether you want to make a sashing, whether you want to make bias strips for stems, or whether you want to do the binding for the edge of the quilt, these tools will do it for you. Now, in moving on with my quilt as you go technique, I wrote my book some years ago because I wanted to be able to share with everybody the way I put my quilts together. It is not a pattern book, it is a technique book. It covers two ways to put your quilts together, my back-to-back -back technique, and we do have another video for you to watch on that, so do search that one on your YouTube channel because it will pop up and you can see how we put our quilts together in the back-to-back -to -back technique. But I want to show you our between-the-block technique. So my book takes you through step by step how to do all of those different things. It even teaches you a little bit about free motion quilting, how I set myself up. Goes through the back to back technique and then we come over to between the block technique. And you will see pages in the book for your notes because I find I'm going to explain a lot in this book. You know, different seam allowance, different needle positions, all different things like that, different measurements to use for your different sashings that you make. Make note of all of that in your book. Let this become your little handbook, and that's why I've done it like so. In the back of the book, you're going to see a gallery of a lot of the quilts I've made using my different quilt as you go techniques. So it's all covered in the book. Now if we're going to be putting blocks together that are applique, we can use this technique. Um, if we're going to be putting blocks together that have a quarter inch point, let's say we've got a lot of pieced blocks with stars and that in them, we can't use our back-to-back -back technique doing blocks like that. So we need to use the between the block technique. So here, I'll just bring my little work board over here because I'll be doing some ironing. But here we've got these blocks made so we've pieced the blocks together. You can see we've got the quarter inch point as we normally do when we piece blocks together. Once we've made the whole block, we put our batting and our backing to it and we quilt each block individually. Simple as because just having a block this size underneath that needle in your little tiny domestic sewing machine makes it very easy for you to quilt. You can do lots of fancy quilting. The quilting is your your um, project, you quilt it to the, the style that you would like. Now when I join these blocks together, I'm going to join them together with a quarter inch seam. I need to work out what size do I want my sashing to be. So I'm going to do a two inch wide sashing to join these blocks together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of fabric two and a half inches wide. Now that fabric is going to show up on the back of the quilt. So if I want it to look like it's one whole back at the back of the quilt, one piece of fabric instead of individual pieces, I would cut that two and a half inch wide strip the same colour as my backing. Or if I'm going to quilt all of these blocks and I've got a lot of fabric in my stash, I might put different colours on the back of each block. 
and then your quilt will be reversible. But for example, today, I've cut my strip two and a half inches wide out of a contrast fabric, and I've joined it here with the quarter inch seam. You can see where I've stitched that in a contrast color so you can see it. That way I'm stitching right onto my points, and then I join the next block to it, and there's my contrast strip. So the, the wrong side of the fabric is facing up to the blocks. The right side of the fabric is facing out to the back of your quilt. So if I had have used this colour fabric as my strip here, and I call this a spacer strip. So your spacer strip is always cut a half inch wider than what your finished sashing will be. So we cut it two and a half inches wide, we stitched it with a quarter inch seam, and that's how it lays. So I could go through and now and put all my sashings in the pink so the quilt would look different on the back to what it will on the front. This is what the front looks like. Press that seam so it sits in to that spacer strip. Uh, or you could call it a back sashing if you want, but I call it a spacer strip. Now I'm going to make a two inch wide sashing to go um, over that space. So I'm going to use the two inch wide sasher, because remember this is your finish size. Now I need to cut my fabric to go through this tool, double this measurement. So I'm going to be cutting this fabric for this four inches wide. So here we have our four inch wide strip and we're just simply going to fold it in and in till it meets. Now if you want to be really accurate there you could just fold it in half and finger press so you've got a, a center point. Then you can fold in and in on both sides. Now I suggest you press about the first two inches just to keep that nice and accurate to thread it into the tool. Hold the tool by the handle. We come up from underneath. We go over that centre bar and straight back down. Now we need to pin this end that we're pulling through into our ironing surface. So I, at this stage, use the double fork pin. Now this is a twin pin. I'll just put it down there so you can see it. Two pins joined together. Now I use this pin instead of two separate pins because I want equal tension on both sides of this fabric. I don't want it to stretch and twist as I iron. So bury the pin. Now the curve in the sasha tool is designed to fit the side of any iron. So I'm just going to use a little mini iron or you can use your big regular iron. Cup up the sides, put the iron against it and you push the tool with the iron. It's a very, very simple process and see how neat it makes that? Just reposition your pin about every 12 inches of pressing. If your fold doesn't stay exactly in the minute, middle, it doesn't matter because nobody's going to see the side, this side of it. So long as this measurement stays the same, it doesn't matter if it runs off. Just continue pushing down. So there's our first sashing made. Very simple step. Now what we need to do next is we need to open this out. We're now going to cut a piece of batting that's just a little bit narrower than this space. Now in all my quilts I make for Quilt As You Go, I did a lot of research, trialled a lot of different battings and I found the only one that I can get a perfect result with is the Hobbs Heirloom double sided fusible batting. So here I've got a piece of this cut, it's 80% cotton, 20% polyester. It has a very light fuse on both sides. So when I'm getting my quilts, uh, my blocks ready prepared for quilting, I just iron the three layers together, I don't need any pins at all. If I happen to sit the iron on top of the batting, nothing sticks to the bottom of my iron when I iron onto it. Um, the fuse washes out when you wash your quilt for the first time. But I love it when I do it in my sashing because it just holds that sashing beautifully. So you just put the batting in. So if we're making a big long sashing, you just cut your batting and lay it in. Press it over. Now your sasher tool gives you this lovely permanent crease. So you don't want your batting um, to distort that crease. So that's why I cut it a little bit thinner than what my sashing is. So I would have cut this um, batting one and seven eighths and my sashing is two inches. So it's just that little bit narrower. So there's my sashing made. So, so simple. 
Now we come back to where we've got our spacer strip in. We use our Roxanne glue basted and we just simply put tiny little dots of glue right on that stitching line. Now you don't need to over glue this, you just need tiny little dots. Now I do glue this down because I find if I pin it, it's going to distort. But if I glue it, it's going to stay there perfect. So this folded edge is going to go right onto my stitching line. Right on the stitching line. That way I'm matching my points perfect. Now when I get that all lined up, I'm just going to press this side to set the glue. And you can appreciate what, how handy the glue is compared to pinning. Now when I do this other side, I've got to make sure that this doesn't tuck back in underneath. I don't want my spacer strip to push back in. So as I put this one down, I'm just going to pull this side of this block out a little bit so that the edge of that sashing is sitting right on that previous stitching line and we'll press with the iron. That way we're matching the points perfect. And you can do a bit of fudging. If you're a little bit off with your points, just adjust your sashing so it comes right up against the point. So it's, it, it makes it really beautiful. Now I'm ready to stitch this on. So I will now top stitch this really close to the edge of the sashing. I will put an open toe foot on my machine. I'll put the edge of the foot right up against the edge of the sashing. I'll move my needle over so the needle sits right on the inside edge of the sashing and as I sew, I watch the side of the foot not to the, ne the needle. If you wanted to, when you stitch down both sides, you could come back and quilt this. So it all blends in together. So it just makes for a wonderful finish. But you can dress your sashings up. I could put another colour strip over the top of that so that I had one of these greens or pinks laying over the top, which, which really, really would dress it up. But I just want to show you some of the other sashings that we might be able to use. Let me just shift this board. Now, here we have a sashing that we've made. We've made the big wide strip through I think it was the two and a half inch sasha tool. Then I've put this one through the one inch. I've filled that with batting. You can see the batting's inside there. Then I've just made some bias strips using the quarter inch sasha tool and some circles and I've stitched that all on. This is not the right size for this block but I could stitch that over the top. I, I put a wider spacer strip in and then I could put a sashing on like this. I could do an applique like this put this through the tool, then cut my batting and put inside and then do some applique. And stitching all your applique onto your sashing before you put it onto your blocks really makes it very easy. So then I could come back and stitch right up the side and I could come back and do some quilting around these to fill up the space. So there's no limitation with what sort of sashing you can make using your tools. Here we've put some triangles together. <coughs> And we have to do a little bit of maths here and make them a little bit wider, but that's very simple to do. It's just working out any maths solution. We've joined them up. Once we've joined them, we've then put them through the sasha tool. It's folded everything to the back for me. Now I could put that over the seam and now I've got a beautiful, beautiful sashing with some triangles. Look how gorgeous that looks. So... There's no limitations to what you can do with your sashings. Now, another way we could do it, we can make up a sashing like so, where we cut our sashing, the width, double the width of the tool that we're going to use. We've cut some squares. I've stitched across there on the diagonal. I'll trim that, the underneath part off, so that I've just got that triangle on the corner. I then come back and put another square on this corner, trim it back and fold that back and press. So it's going to look like this. This is what it looks like at the back. Then I put that through the tool, fold it back to back like we've been doing, fold it in and in, put that through the appropriate size tool. We will then Fill that with batting, so we've put the batting inside. Fill that with the batting. I then glue that, let's take this one off. And this glue is great because you can remove it. 
we'll then put that in place and stitch that in place. Then I would join another spacer strip across here to join the next row of blocks on. Once I've got that spacer strip in, remember this is the spacer strip, it'll be coming across here. I would then make up another unit like this and we put that in place. And then we have the beautiful stars coming into our sashings. How cool is that? And it's just um, letting you know that, the, as I said, there is no limitations to what style of sashing and what size you can make to join your quilts together quilt as you go. But remember, we are using a sashing to join the blocks together. Some quilts you don't want to have a sashing in, so you wouldn't be able to use this technique. And you can see, when we look through here, you can see where I've folded the fabric. Once we put the batting inside, we don't see it. So that eliminates all of that. So let's have a look at the quilt on the back wall behind me. As you can see here, these were just strip, strips, strip piece straight onto the backing and the batting. So very simple quilt as you go, strip piecing. But we really highlighted the quilt by making the stars in the sashings. So we've used a wider sasher and we've done it exactly like I've just showed you on the table with the smaller sashings. And see how that's dressed that quilt up completely. It's made it into a really, really stunning quilt just simply by dressing it up with your sashings. So any size sashings you want to put onto your quilt, you can do it using our sasher tools and referring to my quilt as you go book. This quilt here, we put the same fabrics on the back of each block and that spacer strip we used as the same colour. So when we look at the back of the quilt, it looks like one whole quilt back, but it's not. If you were able to see this up closely, you'd be able to see the sashing strip or that spacer strip running through, but you've got to look very, very closely. So that's just a little few hints and tips on how you can make a beautiful quilt. And if you look at the rest of our YouTube channels, you'll see lots and lots of other quilts that we've got there um, and how we've joined them together quilt as you go. But remember, there's no rules. You just need to find out what size and what style sashing you want to use to really make your quilt grow beautifully. We'll quilt the borders before we join them to the quilt. So never at any stage am I putting a big quilt through this little space on my little domestic machine to do the quilting. And you can see here how we've quilted the sashing. So once we've joined that block and that block together, we've quilted the sashing before we've joined the next piece on. So we're only working one little unit at a time. So thank you for joining us. Do look at our YouTube channel and subscribe so that um, you're going to get a notification. Just hit that bell, hit it hard, and then you will be notified every time we put a new video up there for you to learn from. Also, have a good look at our website because we've got some really cool tools there and wonderful quilt as you go patterns. We've got some stunning quilt as you go patterns now. So have a look at our website, www.pqw.com.au. And thank you for joining me today. Don't forget, Invest in the Quilt As You Go book and it's going to show you all the little tricks and tips and how to make a lot of different sashings. So bye for now. See you next time. Happy stitching. Hello, welcome. I'm Pauline from PQW and I'm delighted you can join me because I want to show you how I... She's got no idea what she wants to do. Oh, I was thinking about five steps ahead of myself. <laughs>